on everybody? I uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today I am going to talk about setting up different clearances in a CD motor, or at least checking them. Uh, this is a 1630 motor, it's out of a 300. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, axial clearance, which comes down to your thrust bearings or bushings, whatever you want to call them. We're also going to talk about our main clearances. I'm going to do this kind of the quick and dirty way because it's a little easier. Uh, we'll use plastic gauge. Uh, I always mic everything up, um, check it that way, but it's kind of a very time consuming process to do with a video. So I'm just going to kind of do the quick and dirty way. And we're also going to check out our rod radial clearances and our main bearing radial clearances. And then, like I said, we're going to look at the axial play of the counterbalance and both the crank. And we're going to also look at the uh, radial play of the uh, bearing for the counterbalance. So we'll get started with doing axial clearance of the counterbalance and the crankshaft. So we're going to start with axial clearance on the crankshaft and we're also going to talk about the counterbalance. Um, you want to get yourself one of these. This is like a Fowler um, gauge and a magnetic base. Uh, usually what I do is for this one to reach I usually put it on the engine stand I use. I set this up right here, put a little preload on it. Okay. And then we're gonna to wanna to make sure the crankshaft is pushed all the way that way. We'll turn it on, we'll zero it out. Okay. So it's all zeroed out now. Well, it was zeroed out until I moved it. Zero it out. Okay. We're just flashing. This is in millimeters. So then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull the crankshaft or push the crankshaft towards it. Oh, sorry. Away from it. And we are at 0.12. And then usually what I do is I'll zero it out again. Okay. And then we're going to push this towards it. So we're at like 0.12 millimeter. Our service manual states uh, axial clearance for the crankshaft 0.08 to 0.31 and we are 0.13 which is right on the tighter end of that which is good because we got brand new bearings in here. Uh, now we're going to move on to the counterbalance. So we got the crankshaft all done for axial clearance that's good. Now I got this set up for checking the counterbalance and clearance. What I do is I push this all the way that way and then I zero this out and we're going to want to be where is it? Uh, 0.02 to 0.25 millimeter clearance. So we got this set up now. We'll give this a push forward. So we are at 0.08. So we are well within the actual clearance range. So now we're going to move on to checking connecting rod clearances with plastic gauge. So I want to note, I uh, should note before checking axial clearance, um, you want to make sure that all the bearings are new, this case is clean. Uh, I mean, you can use reuse bearings, I don't, but you could if you wanted to. Um, you want to make sure that everything's dry, no oil. Everything's clean, dry, no oil. Checking your clearances. You don't want to spin anything and, and screw up any of the bearings or anything. Once you check everything, then what you're going to do is you're going to take it all apart and you're going to put assembly lube on everything and put it back together after you've verified that obviously it's all good. So we're going to first start off with the connecting rod. Um, we're looking for 0 0.0035 as your max service limit. So you want a little, you want less than that. Uh, generally around like two thousandths to three thousandths is about normal what I see with new bearings. So really shooting for like two thousandths. You want a little bit on the tighter end. So. You set up the plastic gauge like that, and then I'll show you what to do next. What you're going to do is, you're going to want to pull this rod and piston package up. Okay. Alright, so that's on. You want to make sure this is straight. And then what you're going to want to do is, you're going to put your bearing cap on. Okay. Make sure it's lined up. So right in the book, 33 foot-pounds, plus or minus 2 foot-pounds. I just do it at 33. 
And what we can do now is we can crush that plastic gauge and then we can loosen this up and we can check to see what our clearance is. So we'll get this tight. We're gonna break them loose so we can check. So obviously I'm gonna check all these, but for video purposes, I'm only gonna do one, just so that the video is not way too long. And now let's see what we come up with here. So now I don't know if you can see this, I'll get in a little closer. We have squished the plastic gauge. It's pretty consistent. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is, we wanna be right around about point, point oh three right around there so we're pretty much right pretty much right in there 0.035 is the service limit so we're right there for this rod and show you like a quick little easy way to kind of clean off the plastic gauge I just use a little WD-40 because if you try and use just like a dry rag it doesn't really come off easily so I'll show you Grab one of these lint-free cloths, and then you put a little bit of WD-40 on it. And then what you do is you just wipe it off. Sometimes it takes a little use of your nail, but once you kind of get it loose, it usually comes right off. That's kind of the only annoying part of doing this, is that you now have to clean all this plastic gauge off every one of these. So generally, that's kind of why I use a mic. Um, but I'll probably do a video on using a mic too. Just not everybody has that available. And you know, a lot of these guys are building them in their like home garage or whatever. So, you know, plastic gauge serves well. I used it for years. Um, I never had a problem with any of these motors I built. So, but obviously the more you do it, the more money you get, you know, you can buy nicer tools, you can use gauges and things like that and it does make life a little easier and more accurate but if the guy doing his back backyard garage or whatever this this suits well so before we actually get to our mains what i'm going to also do is i'm going to check the axial clearance on this and this is something you're going to do with a feeler gauge but again we're going to check this we're going to tighten this back down we're going to torque it and then we're going to check our clearance i'll show you how to do that with a feeler gauge So you want your connecting rod axial play to be 0 0.004 to 0 0.018, which is 0 0.1 millimeter to 0 0.452 millimeter. So I got that set up. I got a big end and a small end. We're gonna wanna make sure that our small end obviously fits and we have clearance. So you wanna make sure the rod's pushed to one side and you wanna make sure this thing fits in all the way around. It does, okay? So that's good. So we're definitely a little wider than the minimum. And let's make sure we're not wider than the maximum. And we're not, we can't get this in here. So we are right within spec for the connecting rod. So now that this is done, I'm going to move on to doing the mains and showing you how to do those with plastic gauge. So I got everything set up. Got a plastic gauge on these, the mains, and obviously the counterbalance. So now you, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take this case, obviously that's clean and it's got new bearings and everything in it, and we're gonna put it on top of here with no sealant, nothing, no oil, and we're gonna tighten it down and we're going to then loosen it, pull it apart, and we're gonna check every one of these. I already checked, make sure all the surfaces were clean. And now I was gonna put this on, but it looks like two of these fell off, so. See a kind of annoying thing with plastic gauge? Six to your fingers, it falls off. If you have the money, buy all the tools. It's a lot easier. All right, they're all on. Let's get our case. We're gonna lightly put it on. Make sure your dowel pins line up. Don't make any sudden movements to make anything fall. Put the case on, okay? Now we're gonna put all of our bolts in. We're gonna torque this. All right, so let's get all these tight. Put these two in here. All 
All right, and now I'm gonna screw them in and tighten them and do them to the correct pattern and all that. All right, so I got all these torqued down um, and now we're gonna loosen them all up and we're gonna pull the case off and we're gonna check everything. Just wanna point out something that makes life a little easier to get the bolts out. I don't know, I use a magnet. It seems to make things a lot faster. So we got them all out. Now let's split the case and see what we got. It's a little hard to see on the crank, probably because it's so clean, but we'll take a look over here. And you can see they've all got their squish. And we will check to see what our clearance is. So for the crankshaft, our service limit uh, it's going to be 0 0.0028, so we want to be probably right around 2,000 is ideal. So let's check. Where are we? So probably a little between one and two thousands. So we're a little bit smaller than two thousands. So which means we're actually a little bit bigger than two thousands, which is okay because we're still within service limit, but we're not. We're not at 0 .03, which would be over the service limit. Yeah, we're good there. So basically you're gonna do that to check all these. They're all about the same. They're less than 3 thousandths, which is the service limit. So we're all good there. For the counterbalance, we're looking for the same, 0 .0028. And here's one. We're right a bit. Three thousandths, two to three thousandths. Let me see what the case looks like. And so it's hard to see because there is like a shadow. But we are about two to three thousandths. Some of the plastic sometimes you won't see on these bearings in that camera because it's a little wider, but it's right there, two to three thousandths, we're in clearance. So that's basically it for checking your motor. So you wanna check your axial, which is these two with your thrust washers. You wanna check the axial with your all your rods. You wanna check your clearance on all the rods. You wanna check clearance on all your mains and clearance on your counterbalance. And that's pretty much it for checking your clearances. Uh, again, this is kind of the quick and dirty way to do it, but if you have, you know, a micrometer and, and a dial bore gauge and all that stuff, like I do, you can put the case together and check the clearance every one of these, get a measurement, and then do the math. Subtract your journal diameter ver minus your bearing clearance, or your bearing size of the case together, and that'll give you your clearances. But plastic gauge does a very similar thing. Um, I say it's pretty accurate, some guys hate it, but it is actually pretty accurate from every time I've done it. It's very close to doing it with a um, dial bore gauge and an actual micrometer. Um, you, just get a, you just get a little more accurate. Uh, you could see the differences between each, but as far as going for a stock rebuild, that's more than adequate. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe. If you have a comment, anything you want us to look at um, specifically, we'll do it. So, you know, we're, I'm kind of in the process of building a motor. This isn't going to be a free, a full rebuild. It's only a short block, so that's why I'm not going to do a build series on the motor. Um, but as I go, I'm going to do all the little uh, things, you know, checking clearances, measuring things, uh, doing the oil pump rebuilds, stuff like that. So water pump rebuilds, anything. So uh, like I said, you got anything you want to, me to look at in particular? Let me know in the comments, and uh, we'll do that. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to make more videos uh, going forward. and hope people are interested.